Joining me right now is Jin Yu Frey. She is an Invicta FC atom weight. She is one of the best atom weights in the world. How you doing, Jin? I'm well. How are you? Good, good. Um, before we get into the fight talk, I want to talk about uh, your travels. You like to experience the world, and you went to the Middle East. What countries did you explore, and was there any culture shock when you went over there? Um, so we went to uh, Jordan because we wanted to check out Petra. And then um, I've always wanted to see uh, the antiquities of Egypt. So uh, we went to Cairo and Luxor. And um, it wasn't, um, you know, like I, I went ahead and bought like all long sleeve clothes and like scarves to kind of cover myself up. And it, it wasn't like you had to, but I just wanted to be respectful of the culture and I didn't want to stand out and just kind of like blatantly, you know, dis disregard their customs. Um, but it wasn't like I felt like I had to. Mm -hmm. um, I actually really liked the, um, the prayer calls. You know, they have their prayer calls. Like, um, I think it's like five times a day, but then they also like play play it during um, sunrise and sunset and it was just it was like hauntingly beautiful um, and I actually really enjoyed the prayer calls um, even though you know I didn't partake but I liked it when you travel like what do you get out of it do you get mental healing or is it just for fun um, maybe a little bit of both like growing up I grew up uh, like extremely poor like we never went on vacation we never did anything I think I went like one time with my grandparents like to the mountains in their RV and um, like after I finished college and like had a career and, you know, made decent money, um, I just decided that I, I wanted to go and I wanted to see everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I went on like one trip and then like I kind of got bit by the travel bug and I was like, I just want I want to see everything. I want to experience everything. I want to see all these different cultures. I want to see these amazing sites. Um, you know, I've lived in Texas my whole life. And I've never been out of Texas. So I just have to see everything I can. You are in phenomenal shape, like all year round. And when I see some of the pictures that you put up, it makes me want to go get liposuction for some reason because your abs are crazy. Now, do you have a special diet protocol that you follow all year round or are you just genetically gifted? I'll have to say, I think part of it is genetics because um, everybody like on the Korean side of my family is extremely lean. Um, like even my niece who's like seven has like abs because um, she's a gymnast. but. Um, also, my husband is a nutritionist, and he cooks all my food. So, uh, you know, I'm extremely fortunate in that. Um, but we, we keep a good eye on my weight all year long. And um, when I'm out of camp, you know, I have about a 70-30 split where I eat really well, like 70% mm -hmm. of the time, and then 30% of the time I can, you know, kind of splurge a little bit. But we do keep an eye. Like, I'm constantly weighing myself. And, you know, we have certain certain thresholds where it's like, okay, if I hit that, it's like, okay, it's time to time to back off and start eating clean again and get my weight back down. Um, you know, cause I'm only going to be competing probably for a couple more years. It's like, I can, I can be disciplined and, um, you know, keep my, maintain my weight at a healthy weight where I can always be in position to make weight if I needed to. I saw that a local boxing gym set out a challenge for you to come out and spar one of their, uh, boxers. Can you explain what actually happened in that video? Um, well, it was it was like a girl that had come to train with me um, a couple of years ago, and we were sparring then, and it was supposed to be kind of light sparring, and things got a little heated, and um, things got a little turned up, and uh, I ended up kind of busting her nose, and I felt really bad about it. Like, I apologized, and I felt bad because she had a fight coming up. Um, and then like, I never heard from the girl again. Um, so I was kind of sad cause she's an atom weight and I was like, man, you know, it'd be awesome to have somebody my size to train with like on a regular basis, but I never heard from her again. And then, um, the boxing gym where I go, I came in one day and they're like, Hey, this girl, her coach called and she wants to come spar rounds with you. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, we have a couple of girls there. It wasn't like, Hey, she just wants some girls to spar with like specifically called me out. Like once you once hard round, hard sparring rounds with you. And I was just like, oh, I think I know this girl. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And so, um, you know, I was talking to my coach. I was like, maybe I should take it easy because I kind of feel bad. Like the last time we went, he's like, and um, I trained at like a Mexican boxing gym. And that is not the mentality at all. Like it is hard nose. Like there have been some like wars in that gym. They're just like, no, like this girl's calling you. She's coming in here. 
you know, you, you can't take it easy on her. Like she's calling you out. She's coming into your turf. You better handle up. And I'm like, okay, you know, I, okay. And I, I don't know what else to do. They're telling me I got to go in there and go hard. So I did, you know, I hadn't seen her in a couple of years uh, and I guess, you know, I, I'm sure maybe she thought she had like, you know, made, had, you know, worked on her boxing and maybe was a lot better. Um, and then she came in and it was kind of bad. Yeah, I guess it, I guess and, she and didn't like, get I, the I kind of felt bad. I was just like, I feel horrible just pounding her in the face over and over. But my coaches are like, no, you finish her. Like, you get in there and you finish it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go back to, you know, your last fight in December at Road FC 45. You challenged Sa Hiam and, you know, you got caught. You know what I mean? People get caught in the fight. You got caught. You lost the fight. How do you assess what happened in that fight? And how long did it take? for you to move on from that loss? Um, you know, obviously it was really upsetting um, because I didn't feel like I really had a chance to perform. And like one of the things that really got to me was like in Asia, like whenever there's fights, it's like dead quiet. Like you can hear a pin drop. And that is like so new because normally it's just like loud, there's music, there's all kinds of people yelling and you just learn how to pick out your corner's voice. Um, so it's so quiet in there and I can hear the commentator in English and he's talking about like how he doesn't feel like I'm being very effective and I need to make something happen. And, you know, all, all of the weight is on me as the challenger, because, you know, if nothing happens, then obviously the rounds are going to go to Sally Ham as the champion. Like, and I, I'm like, I'm hearing this and I'm, and I find myself just listening to him and talking about how I need to make something happen. And I really let that break my focus. And I really felt like I had to force the exchanges and make something happen. Like he was saying, like, and, um, you know, and, and, and that's what I did. I, I forced the exchange instead of taking my time and finding my rhythm and getting her timing down. Like I tried to force it and I ended up getting caught. And, um, so I was really upset that I let that into you know break break make a break in my my mental focus for that fight um and I know like a lot of people when they have a bad loss like it kind of makes them want to quit like some people are like wow I'm not invincible or maybe this isn't for me this is dangerous I could get hurt but it was like after that like it never even entered my mind like oh I should quit um you know like I said a loss like that can end some people's careers but um for me that was like my worst nightmare like it was the worst thing that could possibly happen and it did but then you know I'm still alive I'm still healthy I'm still able to train like I, I survived it so now I feel like it's just another piece of my armor it was the worst thing that I could have possibly imagined happening and it happened and I'm still here and I'm still fine and I was still hungry to get back into the gym and you know, improve and train and just, you know, get that off, get that off my slate. It was your first time fighting in Asia. And of course, like you said earlier, uh, you know, the, the, the arena is dead silent when you're fighting, but what were some other unexpected things that happened when you were there? Um, so the um, uh, fight day, like they had us, you know, there at the event center at like 1130 or 12 in the afternoon. Um, and then I didn't fight till like, I don't know, maybe 10 o'clock at night. So I spent like literally all day there at the arena. Um, so that was, that was kind of weird. Cause usually I'm used to like just being in my hotel room and just kind of like getting my mind right and just kind of lounging, trying to re stay relaxed, um, maybe doing a little visualization, which I mean, I could still do that at the arena, but still it was just not knowing what to expect. And then being there at the arena and like, Oh, I'm just, I'm not going to be in my hotel room. Like I'm used to just like lounging all day and um, you know, not really knowing like the rules, mm -hmm. like, I mean, they were, they were told to me and they were explained to me, but still it's like, you get so used to a rule set and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, it just, it changes. And so I'm, I'm sitting there in my head and I'm like, Oh, can I do this? I'm like, no, I can't do that. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like you're, mm -hmm. you're second guessing yourself and you're playing these things over, you're having this internal dialogue in your head when all you should be focused on is like the fight. Being at the arena all day, because that's almost like 12 hours. Yeah. Was it mentally fatiguing? Um, it, I mean, it wasn't too bad. Like, I, I was trying to stay, like, I, I napped for a while. Mm. But I'm, like, in the, 
in the room with everybody in the corner, you know, in the uh, blue corner, I think. And just like seeing them like get hyped up, they're warming up. It's just like kind of a, an emotional roller coaster because mm-hmm. you kind of get hyped up and your adrenaline starts going as you see them as they're warming up and, you know, and then you see them. It, and it was just like this really extended time. Like obviously that happens, you know, um, but usually when you're like higher up on the car, they kind of put you in a, like a little bit more private room. Yeah. So maybe you don't have to see that as much. So like seeing like eight or nine people go through this, um, like it's hard to stay like calm and uh, collected. What did you think about the rule set of no elbows? Um, it, it was a little different. Um, it's, you know, obviously it didn't come into play um, for my fight, but like I was a little worried about that because we – especially in our ground and pound like we we work a lot of elbows and we we practice that a lot and I was like I'm I'm so nervous that I'm going to like just kind of get in the moment and just muscle memory takes over and I just start like dropping elbows and I'll you know I don't I don't want to disrespect her I don't want to disrespect the promotion but sometimes like muscle memory just takes over and you just you're going through the motions after you've done it like thousands of times yeah now time has passed you're going to go fight on July 21st in Kansas City, Missouri, Invicta FC 30. You're the main event, vacant Adam Waite title against Mina Grusander. Now, at Invicta FC 29, they announced the fight. It looked like you were sitting next to Mina. Was that her or was that somebody yeah. else? <laughs> um, so... They, they had brought me out because they wanted to announce the fight, obviously, but then the decision was made that they wanted to have it pre-taped. Um, I guess that way nothing crazy happened, you know, on live TV or whatever. And so they actually sat me down and just pulled some people from production um, to sit down around me, I guess, so I didn't look like a loser and didn't have any friends sitting by myself. And so I actually had no idea who the girl was, and it was awkward, and I was like, they're, as they're filming us and so we're just pretending like we're talking and laughing and having a great time like we know each other but um a lot of people actually did think that it was Mina and everybody's like was that her or are y'all just like laughing and joking and I was like no <laughs> it wasn't her <laughs> it was just some random girl from production yeah that's that's a funny story because everybody thought like even me I was like doubting my vision you know of who that person was yeah because I mean she's sitting there and she's wearing a hat so I mean like it could have been um but no all right Mina she's uh riding a four fight streak all finishes how does she stack up against your previous opponents is anyone similar to her you think um I you know she's kind of she's kind of a big question mark just because she's been fighting so much on the regional European scene so it's kind of hard to gauge her skill set um and, you know, normally I kind of have, like, the size advantage, but I think she's probably just about my size, if maybe not a little bit bigger. Um, so that'll be an interesting new dynamic. Um, but I just feel like she's she's tough for sure. Um, you know, Nordic people kind of have that hard-headed toughness to them. But I just kind of feel like experience-wise, like, my resume over the last, just, like, two years has kind of been a murderer's row. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whereas she's just been fighting like on the regional European scene, like, you know, people she's fighting are like have two and three fights. Whereas, you know, Sally Ham had like 20 something fights, you know, Ayaka Hamasaki is getting close to 20. Um, you know, I've been fighting the best of the best for two years. Um, so, I mean, I'm not looking past her, but I'm just saying that I definitely bring, um, an edge in the experience to the fight. Yeah, I agree with you. A lot of people, they focus too much on like, how people have fought their previous fights and how they finished them, but they don't really look at who they fought. It's just like, oh, this person has four finishes in a row or something like that. Do you think that's too too much emphasis on that nowadays? Um, I, I think so a little bit because it's like, oh, you know, she, like I, she, I, I thought she looked great. She had a great performance. Um, but then it's like, who did she fight? Like mm-hmm. the girl she fought was coming off like a year or two layoff. You know, she only had like two or three fights. Um, I'm like, you're not going to come in and do that to, like, Saohi Ham or Ayaka Hamasaki. You know what I mean? You're not going to come in and just TKO, like, Herka Tiburcio. Um, So, you know, maybe I don't have as many finishes in my previous fights, but look who I've been fighting. You know, these are are skilled people who are at the top of the food chain. You have fought for the title before, you know, twice, and you fell short. Now, in this training camp coming up, are you in camp right now? 
yeah, I'm, you know, I, like, since I came back from Korea, I've just been, like, I, I didn't really, I, I didn't take any damage, and so, like, that, that next week, I was back in, back in the gym, and I was really trying to get on the March card for Invicta, and that didn't happen, and I really tried to get on the May card, like, I was just really anxious to kind of clean my slate and get, you know, that bad taste out of my mouth, um, so I've been training pretty solidly, um, but we're about to start, you know, picking up the intensity. So have you added anything different to this camp or this camp coming up? Are you going to add anything different compared to the past? You know, I, I don't really think so. It's never been about like coming in unprepared or the hard work. Like I always work hard. You know, I always train and give everything that I have. I, you know, like you said, and it's like, I hate to say it because it sounds so cliche, but I feel like I really did just get caught you know if I were offered that fight again I would take it in a second like I still feel like I'm the better fighter I still feel like I have a broader skill set and you know maybe nine times out of ten I win that fight but that just happened to be the one time and you know maybe people think I'm full of it but uh you know that's that's how I feel about it so it's not like I I came in there unprepared um you know I did let certain things break my focus but and so maybe you know, maybe that's something that I work on for this camp is really just, you know, staying focused and not letting like little things that are outside of my control affect, you know, my mindset. Who will you be working with closely like coaches and are you bringing in any sparring partners, special people to train with? Um, you know, adult weights are super hard to find. Um, but we actually have, um, so Montana De La Rosa is like my main training partner and she is going to be fighting like two weeks before me. Mm -hmm. And, um, so she and I are in camp together and, um, my niece is actually a really good wrestler that, um, actually resembles, uh, Montana's opponent pretty well. So she's going to be coming in. Um, Christina Williams is a Bellator flyweight, um, mm -hmm. who's been on a pretty hot streak and she has a fight announcement coming up. I can't say who it is yet, but, um, so she has decided that she's going to spend her camp with us. So we, it's like, we have tons of flyweights coming in, um, but we don't have any atom weights, but it's still good to see, you know, have these different bodies and see different styles and, um, get in there and train with them. What strengths do you think you possess over your opponent coming up? Um, you know, for sure, I would say wrestling. Um, you know, there's like, you have a couple of countries in the world that put out really good wrestlers, but nobody has like folk style wrestling, which is what we do here in the United States. You know, everybody has freestyle and they have Greco. Um, but, you know, our kids in school grow up doing folk style wrestling and it's just so smothering. And if you've never experienced that, if you've never had, oh, sorry, my dog. <laughs> if you've never had like, a good folk style wrestler on you it's just it's so exhausting it's so draining um so i definitely you know i'm, I'm not going to say that she's not going to have anybody in her camp who can you know get on her like that and just make her feel that pressure um but i definitely feel like i'll probably have quite a bit of wrestling um over her all right one last question before i let you go there have been rumors, you know, that the UFC might bring in a uh, women's atomweight division in the future. You know, you're considered one of the best atomweights in the world. If they do have, you know, if you, if you can debut in the UFC, who would you like to face? There's so many atomweights and you have many previous opponents. Who would you like? You know, I don't know if Sahih Ham would want to, if, you know, I don't know contractually, like, where she's at with Road, but, um, you know, I definitely would like the opportunity to get that one back. And, um, you know, obviously I want to fight top five. I want to fight the best in the world or, you know, Aoka Hamasaki. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd like to get those losses back. And, you know, with Aoka, that was kind of a controversial stoppage. Um, and, but in both fights, I feel like I didn't get the chance to really perform. And so um, I feel like... I just, I don't really know how those fights would go. I, I, I want the opportunity to see how, you know, the full fight would go. Yeah, if they ever had an inaugural Adam Waite title fight in the UFC, any of those fights would be incredible, I believe. Invicta FC 30, July 21st, Kansas City, Missouri. You're taking on Mina Grusander for the vacant Adam Waite title. Jen, thank you for your time and uh, good luck. Thank you.